trip to postseason play for the first time in a while. It certainly does uh, exactly what our seniors and captains were looking forward to. Uh, tremendous excitement by our football team and, and a great, great game for the fans. Looks like the Huskies will be playing in the Sun Bowl in El Paso, Texas for the third time. You wanted the Cotton Bowl, Jim. You're not going to get it, but a bowl trip is what's important, isn't it? Uh, the critical thing for our team at this point is to get the extra practices and to get back into a bowl swing. Uh, we campaigned as much as we could. Uh, uh, nothing else you can do. Uh, very pleased with a co-conference championship. Well, yesterday's game was one of great emotion, big plays throughout, and we look forward to rolling those first quarter highlights after the break. And as we go to the break, why don't we hear from a Husky fan and get uh, his opinion of the Washington State Cougars. Husky Football with Jim Landride is brought to you on Prime Sports by your Puget Sound GMC truck dealers, the strength of experience, by Miller Genuine Draft, making the Pac-10. 21 Husky seniors introduced before yesterday's Apple Cup game. There's Leon Neal. He didn't get a chance to play, but was a factor nonetheless. Washington and Washington State getting ready to do it for 1995. Welcome back to Husky Football with Coach Jim Lambright and the 21 seniors, Jim. They have been through so much, and in a way, yesterday's game was just kind of a microcosm of their careers. It really was uh, yet a highlight of the careers uh, as far as putting a proper cap on uh, where this, the seniors have been able to take the program, uh, a national championship early, two years of sanctions, back to the bowl game, a co-conference championship now, uh, and proper due to them being introduced and to finish up at home the way we did. All right, enough of the introductions. Let's go to the first quarter highlights now. Washington and Washington State in the 1995 Apple Cup. The Huskies won the toss on a kind of gray day in Seattle. It would get a lot grayer. Uh, they deferred to Washington State, and the Cougars were fired up. They would have the football to begin the game, and they started first and ten after you kicked the ball out of bounds on the kickoff, Jim, at their 35-yard line, and we got our first look at this much-touted freshman quarterback, Ryan Leaf, and uh, they came out with a running play to Madu. Good yardage over the right side. I really did. Uh, showed his strength and, and speed there on a the first play. Frank Madu for 13, and now Leaf going up top, and a completion to Chad Carpenter. His split end for nine more. Yeah, tighten it up against the run. Frank Madu, their senior, fourth leading rusher in the Pac-10 Conference, played that one well. Uh, with Chork and Jensen both involved in that. And uh, come right back and a, a nice play by Kaika Malloy uh, coming around the corner there. Washington State with the ball in its opening possession. This is fourth down and one. And Madu gains three yards to keep the drive going. First and ten at the Husky 40 now. And a rollout from Ryan Leaf. And he's right on the money again. And he really shows the, the sort of athlete uh, that he is here. And uh, a nice job faking, set so nicely in the pocket, and uh, a real good throwing motion. And a uh, main man receiver, Jay Dumas, out of Curtis High School, the senior making the catch. That was good for 19 yards. Cougars threatening early. Right, come back to McWashington there for a gain of four. Reggie Reeser right there. Second down and six at the Washington 17-yard line. Miguel Merriweather up the middle. And a short gain on the play. Now Leaf going back up top. And you get a kind of a close call right here. We're going to see a late flag. And Lawyer Malloy called for holding on the play. It, uh, I think it was, a, it was a good call. He uh, he grabbed the hold of his jersey a little bit there. Trailing really didn't need to. Uh, the ball was, uh, was thrown uh, uh, almost uncatchable. But in that case, uh, was called holding anyway. Kearney Adams was the intended receiver. There's Madu for six to the one-yard line. They come right back with Kwame Stewart there. Bigger back trying to get in. He did not. It is third and goal at the one. And this time, Mr. Leaf calls his own number. And the Cougars take it 65 yards for a touchdown. We'll look again. This guy's 6'5", 228 pounds, Jim. And he was, if, if you thought he was going to be rattled on that first drive in his first appearance in Husky Stadium, you had to think otherwise the way that one went. Uh, we sure second-guessed ourselves on that. Uh, when our defense came off, it was a matter of, okay, coaches, let's get into the game plan. Now, what did they do? Uh, where, where do we need now to, uh, to make corrections and get good feedback from your defense on the sideline? 11 plays on that 65-yard Cougar drive, and Butch says, I like that. The Huskies unable to move on their first series. We move ahead to Washington State's second possession. The Cougars first and 15 at their own 34-yard line. And here's Madu, and we get a great defensive play. 
It, uh, great defensive push up field from the whole left side there and uh, Akaika Malloy making the tackle for loss and come right back and uh, have great coverage downfield and uh, Ryan Leaf uh, finds out a little bit about our slippery ass for sure. <laughs> 11 yards on the scramble third down and 10 at the 39 yard line and another good defensive play here. Reggie Reeser yeah really fine breakup nice uh, nice break on uh, on Ryan Leaf's throwing motion there. And that's a good player he's hitting and Eric Moore their tight end so you force the punt fourth and 10 at the Cougar 39 yard line. Go back to uh, Dave Janowski back uh, returning and uh, they're a little too close to him get a five yard penalty for not giving him enough uh, of a fielding cushion. Cougars with a seven and nothing lead Huskies about to get the football for the second time after the penalty first and ten Washington Huskies begin at their 28 yard line and Rashawn Sheehy the start of something very good here. All right got to get back to what's been good for us and uh, Rashawn has been real good in that offensive line just uh, doing a great job throughout this game. Not so great on that play. They get you for a loss of two. It's third down and seven at the 31 yard line. Damon Heward going to Rashawn Sheehy. Pick up seven there and uh, going to come back uh, with Sheehy again on the carry and uh, with a little draw action. This is on first down at the 38 yard line. A little draw action and a big play resulting gain of 12 for Rashawn. He's now at midfield and you go with a little trick play the flea flicker and it works splendidly. It was, uh, it was one of those where you'd love to have Janoski get in the end zone there but uh, <laughs> I'll tell you we were watching from the sideline and uh, uh, it's always fun to uh, know this play's coming and uh, Dave Janoski ran such a great route both their safeties were up stopping the run and, uh, and he had about a 10 yard head start the the ball just hung a little bit and uh, too bad it couldn't be a touchdown. Gain of 49 yards to try the running play on the inside with Terry Holloman. We had Sheehy out because he, uh, he hurt his helmet, uh, broke a helmet on that last carry of his. Well, it uh, didn't take him long to get that fixed and then he's into the end zone. Helmet and all, the one yard touchdown and the Huskies in position to tie the game and get this one pretty well blocked. You get a pretty good idea what it's like to be in the trenches there. We got some great lineman push and, uh, and our tight ends. Oops, another of those uh, kicking game faux pas here as you get kind of a bad snap and uh, it's not going to be tied. 7-6 is the score. Washington State in the first quarter. Huskies with a good drive though to uh, get close. 72 yards in seven plays. Sheehy the one yard run. What happened on the snap? That uh, was something that uh, thank goodness that was the only time it was going to be missnapped and uh, just a little bit high by Opu and uh, he gets it corrected. We move forward here. The Cougars could not move on the next series. Washington first and 10 starting at the Cougar 44. Sheehy for 14. Come back at the 30 yard line with Damon going up on top and the other guys wind up with the football. Right. Damon threw two interceptions uh, in the game but both of them were uh, we're going for the end zone uh, touchdown type throws and uh, uh, justified by one great catch by uh, Dave Janoski a little bit later. If they tip the ball, Adeshila Morincola with the interception for Washington State. Break for the Cougs. They retake possession first and 10. Coming back the other way from their 20 yard line, Frank Madu to start it off and Jerry Jensen and company ending it in a hurry. All right, really good push there. They're going to come right back with Leaf on the pass. Uh, Again, you, you see how well he throws even under pressure. Boy, and this was a thread the needle type pass to David Knopf, their number two tight end. You'll see the Huskies are really in pretty good position here. The ball just drops right in between the purple shirts to the guy in white. That's a gain of 18 yards. You got to congratulate them on that on that timing. And again, we've got so many people upfield uh, in our defensive front that uh, there's nothing on the run. Madu loss of two. Jason Chorick with the play. They come back to Kwame Stewart. We closed down in the uh, first quarter here, and that was going to do it. After one, Washington State with a 7-6 to six lead on the Washington Huskies. And you have the feeling in the first quarter, Jim, you were struggling a little bit on both sides of the ball. Really felt that for the, full, the whole first half, we were going to struggle in this game, just getting our timing down. And, uh, and the first half was probably reflective of a nervousness by our team. It was a very emotional game for us. Well, Apple Cups are like that. We'll get to second quarter highlights when we come back with Husky head coach Jim Lambright right after this. This is great, <laughs> man. I, I, this is so great just to, to uh, be able to go out as a winner and then to find out that, that you're not only won the Apple Cup, you started a new tradition of winning at home, 
but you're also a Pac-10, co-Pac-10 champion, you know, so it feels great. Husky history would be made in the second quarter of yesterday's Apple Cup game with Washington State. Let's get to those highlights right now. The Cougars leading 7-6 to six after the first period at Husky Stadium yesterday. Washington State third down and nine at the Cougar 40-yard line. And Ryan Leaf can exercise that right arm once more early in the second quarter. Goes out underneath and the Cougars get a first down completion. And a nice play made by Leaf and Sean Timms did well after the catch. Right. Really showed the good running ability by Jason Chork on uh, assisting on the tackle. It's an interesting play. Second down and nine. Cougs at the Washington 49-yard line. Leaf going long down the middle of the field. And you are whistled for an interference call here that, uh, frankly, I thought was a dubious call at best, Jim. I, uh, I, we felt pretty much that it should have gone against the Cougars. Uh, if there's going to be a call, basically, there shouldn't have been a call. But... Uh, but it was uh, their receiver who ran into our defender who uh, had better uh, better field position for the ball. Lawyer Malloy, who would go out with a foot injury uh, not long thereafter, uh, called for the pass interference, and the Cougars with the first and ten at the Husky 34-yard line. They come back with a short run, and now Leaf going up top. And get this played really well. Bryant Thomas with the fine. catch, just two-yard gain. All right, fine play by Scott Greenlawn. Going to be followed immediately by a sack by uh, Deke Devers. We'll see it again and how fitting for one of those seniors playing their last home games. Deke Devers, a Seattle guy, coming around the corner to get the sack. 11-yard loss. The Cougars fourth and 18 at their 42, and George Martin had to punt it away and couldn't keep it out of the end zone. And uh, we talked about the Husky history. Damon Hewitt, right there, number seven, getting ready to become the leading passer in the history of this school. And here's the play that did it. Third down and nine. The Huskies at their 21-yard line. Damon trying to pass Sonny Sixkiller on top. Goes the left flat to Rashawn Sheehy. Does a lot of running to turn this into a 19-yard gain. And Damon Heward becoming the most productive passer again in Husky history, breaking Sixkiller's mark of 5,496 yards. What a great role he's played in... Uh in Husky history as far as keeping this team together and uh, uh, really contributing uh, so much in uh, uh, in creating big plays and momentum and uh, uh, great uh, honor to uh, to go out and uh, have that ball saved and uh, present it to the all-time leading passer. Not much happened the rest of the drive. We've got Jeff Prince punting at the Washington 45-yard line. You get a great kick here. Jeff uh, kicks a ball that, uh, that bounces well. He's used to, to kicking in all that Husky Stadium win. So you got the Cougars deep in their own end at the eight-yard line. They come out with Frank Madu for a gain of seven yards. And Lawyer Malloy there and uh, playing his usual role up uh, around the last scrimmage. Madu for one. Third down and two now at the 16, and they get a big gain. Chad Carpenter, the receiver. Uh, real fine pass and, and catch. and. Uh, you sure can't knock uh, Reggie Reeser's field position there. It's uh, for position on the, uh, uh, the receiver. It's a gain of 26 yards. First and 10, the Cougs push it out to their 42-yard line. And they get a man wide open on the sideline, Knopf, and uh, you saw enough of him on that play. He sure, sure did. Uh, we were in a man-to-man -man coverage, uh, bringing a, a little bit of pressure, and, uh, and slipped him out of the backfield. And it was really a fine call by then. Drive started back at the 8. Cougars now at the Husky 28-yard line. They try Madu in the middle, and he takes some punishment. Right. The middle of the defense playing pretty good. And Leaf looking again for Carpenter, and one of the few bad balls the youngster threw all day long. Threw it in behind him. You saw Chad Wolf playing the safety now in place of the injured lawyer Malloy. Leaf going back to the air. Has a man open at the boundary line. That's Jay Dumas again. Right. Great pass, great catch. Nothing you can do about those on the boundary. First and 10 at the 17-yard line. Here's Madu, gain of three over the left side. Cougars second and seven at the Washington 14. They try to run off tackle with Madu again, a gain of only two. But now third down and five at your 12-yard line, and who's in the middle? Nobody. Yeah, they, uh, they actually caught us on this play. Uh, we, had a, we had a phone go dead from uh, our defensive coaches in the press box, and... Uh, uh, didn't get a call down at all, and uh, so the players made the call on the uh, 
uh, on the field. You want to get a cell phone to avoid that <laughs> problem. <laughs> Those things every once in a while happen. The Cougars pushing it to a 14-6 advantage. That is a 92-yard, 10-play, four-minute drive with Mr. Leaf turning over his second touchdown of the day. The Huskies, we pick up now first and 10 at the Washington 29-yard line later in the period after both sides failed to move. Damon Heward to Fred Coleman for 11. Right, you know, a two-minute drill here comes back uh, to Janowski for 14, and uh, uh, again, it shows how quickly we can move the ball. There's Damon stepping away from pressure, and I thought you had a well, touchdown uh, here. I think put a little more air underneath the ball here. You got Rashawn Sheehy uh, down the middle, uh, had outrun the, mm. the linebacker and was uh, just in great position of just give him a chance to run under it. Second and 10 at the Washington State 46-yard line. Throw it out. Get the completion to Jerome Payton for eight yards. Who plays just some gigantic roles later on in the game. Now third and two at the Cougar 38 as the Huskies push toward the end of the period. And here's one Damon would like to have back. Great play by the Cougars right here. It really was uh, a tip ball. Uh, uh, Damon would love to have it back, you're right, but uh, this is one of those where it's a real fine athletic play. That's Brandon Moore tipping the ball, and did he get the feet in? The official said he did. And an alert play by the Cougar linebacker to preserve that 14-6 Washington State lead at halftime. The Huskies struggled a bit in the first quarter, a bit again in the second, and were you nervous going into the locker room, Jim, down by eight points? I'm uh, real concerned about uh, just not smoothly getting stuff together uh, on either side of the ball. The 92-yard drive, critical uh, uh, problem with our defense. Uh, having uh, our, our free safety out uh, was a problem we had to deal with at halftime and, uh, and just had to smooth out the offense. All right, we'll come back with more with Husky head coach Jim Lambright right after this. Uh, wow, you know, what a way to, to leave uh, your last game as a senior. Uh, just all the emotions, uh, just the game. I mean, that's what the rivalry is all about. Great, fantastic finishes, big plays, and, uh, you know, this is the greatest way as a senior you can leave Husky Stadium with just a big win in the closing seconds. It's just, it's, it's an amazing feeling. Philadelphia, birthplace of the Constitution, and the cheesesteak. I secretly replaced the cheesesteaks at Tony's with my own. They're filled with juicy marinated steak and grilled onions and peppers smothered in melting cheese. Let's see if anyone noticed. How's that Philly cheesesteak? Wonderful. The best. Hey, you ain't Tony. I'm his brother, Jackie. Oh, yeah. If you travel on business around the Northwest, you want to spend less time waiting for your flight to leave and more time with your loved ones. That's why Horizon Air has more flights than any other airline in the Northwest. So you can spend less time here and more time here. Touching, isn't it? Mister, that's not our mom. Did I mention Horizon Air also gives you a free morning paper? Paper. The Ford F-Series looks great in the showroom, with chrome wheels, tilt steering, power windows and locks, and more. But here in the Northwest, we don't live in a showroom. This F-150's got the stuff that's made it the most popular truck in the Northwest, with a standard engine that's bigger than anything else in its class, and overall quality that's made it number one. Get one today at your local Northwest Ford dealer, and get out a little. Hey, uh, Red Dog. Why? Do you ever wonder why we're here? Where? You know, here. Why we exist. No. How come? I got better things to think about. But why are we the way we are? I mean, I'd give anything to be as big as you. True. You ain't big, but you're real quick. <laughs> quick? Yeah. I guess it all evens out then, huh? Well, that might be pushing it. Red Dog. Hey, hey Red Dog. Yeah? Full moon tomorrow night. I'm there. You're watching Husky Football with Jim Lambright on Prime Sports. I mean, this uh, this season, we had our ups and downs, and uh, everything turned out right. We wanted to be Pac-10 champs, and, you know, now we're co-Pac-10 champs, and you can't ask for nothing better. Feels pretty good. Washington trailing Washington State 14-6 to at halftime in the 1995 Apple Cup game yesterday. And uh, turnovers, we thought Jim Lambright would be a key in this game. 
The Cougars have been having problems in that regard. The Huskies doing such a good job, and yet at halftime, they had the two interceptions, and uh, you didn't have any. Right, and uh, I think the important thing was that uh, in the second half, we didn't give away any. Uh, the two we gave away in the first half, one in the end zone, one on the out of bounds right at the, uh, at the end of the half, were almost insignificant as far as creating something for them. Take a look now at the first half statistics from the Apple Cup game yesterday. As Washington trail by a score of 14 to 6, uh, pretty even down the board. They uh, had two more first downs than you did. Uh, the rushing yards pretty close, passing yards pretty close. Obviously, the total yards almost identical, but again, the two turnovers. Damon Heward had thrown only one interception in the entire Pac-10 season, and here he had two in the first half alone. Did that concern you? Uh, no, not the way that it was thrown. The, uh, the stats and the important thing about the stats that was going to change was Rashawn Sheehy had 41 yards rushing in the first half and he's going to end up with 212. Yeah, he's going to make a big play here before too awfully long when we go to third quarter highlights. And before we do, well, let's take a look at some Husky fans who kept up the spirit despite some weather that was ever more inclement as we got to the second half yesterday. We're back in a minute. I want a man that's thoughtful, intelligent, a good listener. Oh, and I want someone who's very experienced. Well, at plumbing. The Eagle Experience. Eagle experts that know their stuff. Eagle Hardware and Garden. More of everything. Respected home light quality. Home light blowers, gas leaf blowers, leaf blowers, or vacuum backpack. Lightweight, low noise. Home light at Eagle. Imagine you have to fly between Portland and Seattle. And imagine this is a big jet with room for a kajillion passengers. Now imagine this is a Verizon Air Dash 8 with room for 37 and in-flight service. Let's see what happens. Okay. I'll say a wild hunch here, but it occurs to me that the Horizon Dash 8 gets you in and out faster and easier than a big bus. Did I say bus? I meant big jet. <laughs> what was I thinking? The Ford F-Series looks great in the showroom, with chrome wheels, tilt steering, power windows and locks, and more. But here in the Northwest, we don't live in a showroom. This F-150's got the stuff that's made it the most popular truck in the Northwest, with a standard engine that's bigger than anything else in its class, and overall quality that's made it number one. Get one today at your local Northwest Ford dealer, and get out a little. Hello from Plank Road, where our man Paul has breaking news about Ice Brewed Ice House. While most folks like the handy-to-hold 12-ounce bottle, others demanded cans, and we listened. Then someone said, instead of just six packs, how about 12 packs of this smooth brew? And then a cry went out across the land for 24-pack cases. So now, no one else stacks up to Ice Brewed Ice House. Thanks, and enjoy. You're watching Husky Football with Jim Lambright on Prime Sports. <laughs> I wish I knew. I mean, I want to see a, a replay of it myself. I think one of the guys was falling. There was double coverage. Uh, there was two guys there, and he threw it up. And uh, there was two guys there, and I think one of them was slipping and, and falling behind me. And the other guy in front of me got his hand on it, and he had one hand on it, I think. And I just reached over him and grabbed it and took it from him. Now don't worry, Dave, we'll show you plenty of replays of that. Later on, though, we have some uh, other highlights to show you before we get to a great catch from Dave Janoski. Interesting, when the Huskies and the Cougars went to the locker room yesterday, it was dry at Husky Stadium. When they came out, it was pouring rain. Jim, did you take that as a good or a bad omen? Oh, our players started cheering right away. Shoot, it's a Husky Stadium. It's not snow and Pullman, so uh, it was like, hey, everything's going to be all right. 14 to 6, Washington State leading the Huskies at halftime. Let's go to third quarter highlights now of the 1995 Apple Cup game. And uh, you wanted to be in your seat early on. The Huskies had a little problem with the kickoff to start the half. Started at their own eight-yard line. You open up with Rashawn Sheehy for seven yards, and you're going to come back with Rashawn Sheehy for a whole lot more than seven. Right. You see the play get stuffed up in the middle. He bounces it outside, and then there is no one with enough speed to close on him. He ran right in front of you. You gotta love that. It huh? was great. We were cheering all the way, the whole bench. <laughs> That's an 85-yard touchdown run, surpassing the 80-yard touchdown Rashawn had in the Stanford game earlier this year. 
and just some great individual effort here using uh, blocks where he could find them but a little juke here and there and hello sideline they just closed that sideline off enough and uh, our players maintain some blocks and look at bob sap run <laughs> Fifth longest <laughs> scoring run in Husky football Derek history. Derek Battle. <laughs> 85 <laughs> yards, and everybody wants to get in the end zone. Now you go for two to try to tie the score, and it didn't work. Yep, got a little uh, little confusion on the route, and uh, Damon had someone in his face too quickly. So the Huskies come out and electrify the Cougars in the crowd. A 92-yard two-play drive. Rashawn Sheehy, both plays. 14-12, the Cougars. Take it over first and 10 at their 27 yard line. And this would be a very important series. Madu on the carry for a gain of one. Uh, Jerry Jensen, Suki Wiggs, uh, got uh, a little of the, uh, of the intensity of the game there. And uh, a lot of the intensity of the game. We had a dead ball personal foul on Frank Madu. And we also had an ejection. Uh, Frank Madu here is a senior running back, one of the better running backs in the Pac-10 conference. How important was this? I'll tell you, it was absolutely critical in this game because you just saw Rashawn Sheehy with what he could do, and all of a sudden, uh, Madu swung, a, swung on a player, threw a punch, and, uh, uh, and we've gone through that fighting rule, and there's no way they're going to let you get away with that. Here's a wild play. Cougars got 13 on first down, and then Leaf scrambling gets a completion. You're going to get a big hit, boom, right there, and uh, <laughs> this was just carnage. After this play, Jim, he had their receiver slow to get up. But uh, as we look at it again, this was the play in which Washington defensive tackle David Ritchie was injured. And uh, everybody was so frightened uh, as the result. We see the uh, the play again. Brian Thomas with the catch and Jason right. Chork with Jason a big Chork pop. downfield. Just great job. And uh, again, having two people down on the field, their player, uh, Brian McShane. And yeah. here's David Ritchie, and uh, right in front of the Husky bench, Jim, this was a neck injury, always scary, and update us on his condition, would you? Uh, David is uh, doing fine today, has uh, all the feeling back, uh, uh, just a little numbness in his left hand. Uh, they'll keep him in the hospital until tomorrow morning. Well, the Cougars also had a holding call on the play after an 11-minute delay, third and 26 at the Washington State 11-yard line. Miguel Merriweather in for the ejected Madu, got eight, they punted away. And we're going to get some pretty good field position out of this. Yeah, we sure are. Uh, and yet what's really important here is that you reestablish momentum now uh, after such a long break in the game. It was really a scary moment, always is, and we're glad to hear that David Ritchie is doing better. And uh, David, get well soon. Huskies first and ten at their 35-yard line. Sheehy for a gain of three. We come back, Damon Hewitt, to Janoski with uh, another big 39-yard game. And a nice move after the catch. What a day David had. Six catches for 162 yards, 39 of them on this play. And again, this is uh, another example of uh, big play players making things happen uh, in big games. First and 10, Huskies at the Washington State 23-yard line. This time the Cougars play Mr. Sheehy pretty well. They sure do, and uh, we get uh, even uh, even worse a holding call on it. <laughs> you get a loss of two and a holding call. It doesn't get a lot yeah. worse than that. First and 21 at the Cougar 34-yard line. You come out to uh, Sheehy in the right flat. This is a play you used a lot yesterday. Uh, with their uh, with their people dropping off uh, as much as they did, it was really important that we use the uh, the flare routes. And here you get a great example of Richard Thomas and the blocking strength of our linemen. 12-yard gain for the Husky senior fullback. Third and eight at the Cougar 21-yard line. You go for the end zone, and they've got this one all covered up. Yeah, combination of pressure and good coverage, and uh, get a little look at uh, John Wales and his accuracy again. And how this must have felt to John Wales. A 38-yard field goal. He got it all. This is his longest field goal of the season and number 18. An obviously happy guy. The Huskies with the lead for the first time, a 44-yard six-play drive. John with the field goal. It's 15-14 Washington. And we will move ahead now. Pick up the action. 3-10 to go in the third. First and 10 Cougars at their 39-yard line. Leaf for Sean Timms for a big 20-yard game. And Chad Wolf there uh, for the tackle. Again, in the absence of Lawyer Malloy, Leaf comes back to the other side to Kearney Adams for a gain of six. The young quarterback uh, feeling it right here. They come back with the run and a pretty good move yeah. by Merriweather. A couple of uh, couple of missed tackles and uh, you see uh, what a good athlete Merriweather is. First and ten, Cougars at the Washington 30. And they sting you right here. You get a defender falling down and they got a guy in the end zone. Yeah. 
Bernie Adams again, and we'll, just, we'll see on the replay, did he step out of bounds? Not that it matters because it was called a touchdown, but keep an eye on the feet right there. One. <laughs> right there. Another one. <laughs> and did the ball ever go into the end zone? Well, whatever. Uh, <laughs> we saw a similar play last week. They put Sheehy out on the uh, one-inch line. They go for two, and you get a great play by Leaf, scrambling around and finding Chad Carpenter for the conversion. Again, uh, this typical of this game, how it's going to swing back and forth and back and forth the third and fourth quarters. 61 yard, four play drive to conclude the third quarter, and Washington State with a 22 to 15 lead on the Washington Huskies. And I thought a really good answer drive by the Cougars, Jim, to retake the lead. It was, and uh, it just builds the momentum for uh, for the fourth quarter. And uh, we've taken a lot of pride in being a fourth quarter team, and so many of our games have come down to winning or losing right at the very end. Well, and this one certainly did. There would be a field goal to win this game at the end. And as we go to break, a little trivia question for you. When is the last time the Washington Huskies had a game-winning field goal? All right, when the last time the Huskies won a game in the closing minutes by a field goal. Think about that one. We'll have the answer when we come back. Are you tired of having lenders dictate the terms of your loan? Well, call the money store. At the money store, you can help decide the terms for refinancing your mortgage or getting a home equity loan. Just call 1-800-LOAN-YES and tell them the amount you want to borrow and how much you can afford to pay each month. Then the money store will structure the loan to meet your needs. That's right. Now there's a lender that works with you and lets you help decide the terms of your loan. So call the money store at 1-800-LOAN-YES. Doing what you like can be a lot more fun. When you do it in a 1996 GMC Jimmy. The new 96 Jimmys are here and are priced thousands less than the competition. Hurry into your Puget Sound GMC truck dealer today. The power, the intensity, the grace in your face. Gotta be Sonics basketball. The Sonics are moving into their new house and you can catch all the action from yours with Sonics home ticket. The flash, the dance, the flush, the rush. Gotta be Sonics basketball. The Sonics are going to war, and you can get a piece of the action. Call your local cable operator and tell them you want to be a part of history. Yeah! In our vast universe, be assured there is one constant driving truth. Nobody plays the NBA like TNT. Every week, watch the shooting stars defy gravity and take the score into orbit. Forget the telescope and let Viacom Cable create the high hoop atmosphere. The NBA on TNT. More than one giant leap. To foreshadow the fourth quarter a little bit, we're asking as our Husky trivia question this week, when was the last time the Huskies won a game in the closing minutes by a field goal? Do you remember... November 12th, 1988, Cal playing here in Washington. John McCallum hitting from 25 yards out to cap a great comeback. The Huskies beating the Golden Bears 28 to 27. And we'll see more of the same here in a moment as we get to fourth quarter highlights now. The Apple Cup game between Washington and Washington State. The Cougars leading 22 to 15 after the third period. And there would be high drama in the fourth. And we pick the Huskies up first and 10 at their own 49 yard line. And you went with another exotic play. The handoff to Janoski thrown up top. And the Cougars weren't fooled at all. A no, little uh, reverse action. Uh, tried to get uh, Freddie Coleman open downfield, but uh, Cougars did a real good job setting back. Uh, had a soft zone called and uh, played well over the top of it. They had the reverse smelled out pretty well and uh, did a nice job in pass coverage, too. Probably lucky that one didn't get picked off. Second down and 10. Huskies at their 49. There's that little swing pass to Sheehy. A little, little good matchup on that and still gained five. That's a big play right here, Jim. Third down and five. You're desperate for a conversion and a, a soft pass and good hands 
from Cameron Cleland to pick up the first down, a gain of nine. Right, really critical in this in this drive that uh, we get seven points on the board and uh, get there Sheehy on a, on a game for three. Well, they uh, get a pretty nice defensive play, flushing Damon out and Wayne Sanders making the play for Washington State. Third and nine, another third and long rather here is the, uh, the quarterback sack by Sanders and Holmes on the play, but uh, interesting call here. They get a big play, but a face mask, and this really helped keep you alive. Well, it sure did. Uh, really swung field position back and gives us a chance to uh, uh, get a hold again, but, uh, but again, we're, uh, we're going to end up making the play you have to make. We were dropping back to pass and saying, well, I think I'll just throw it for the end zone, but I don't know how it happened, but it happened. <laughs> hey. It happened because he thinks he can catch anything that ever gets thrown. And, uh, and as a result, uh, Dave Janoski uh, is one really fine receiver that's just going to go up and get the ball, period. Double covered Brian Walker, number six. I'm sure thought he had an interception, but he did not. Instead, <laughs> we have our Husky Genuine Moment, sponsored by Miller Genuine Draft. Damon Hewitt throwing for Dave Janoski, the guy in the middle of the sandwich. Comes up with the football. Great nice. catch. Yeah, nice, nice touch on the ball to give uh, to give Dave a chance to make that play. Husky Genuine Moment, sponsored by Miller Genuine Draft, and another pretty good moment came shortly thereafter as you go for two to try to retake the lead. Nice play there. You had uh, one guy going out to the sideline, threw it underneath. Right. Jerome Payton on there. Payton. Going to come back with uh, with Jerome later on to make one of the big field position uh, moves on a on a kickoff return. The Huskies taking the lead back 23 to 22, and there was great electricity in the stadium in the fourth quarter. Six play, 51 yard, two minute and 45 second drive. The Cougars though were not finished. They have a first and ten at their 20 yard line. Merriweather again in place of the ejected Frank Madu, a gain of two. Come right back uh, with a pass to McWashington. A uh, little gain of four, Aliaga and uh, Malloy right there. And here's a big play coming off the corner. You got him from the backside. He was tough to get, but Scott Greenlaw making the play. Yeah, a little corner blitz coming in. and uh, Lawyer Malloy <laughs> calling for noise on the sideline in street clothes with the injured foot, and he was fired up about this play from your senior cornerback. He sure was, and uh, he's just a lot like uh, Leon Neal. We've got uh, great leadership and... Uh, Great enthusiasm on the team. Cougars have to punt it away, and uh, again, Mr. Janoski doing his thing, and this was just a shame. This is a terrific return, and you had a uh, an infraction on the play, Jim, and deprived him of a great return, a great field position. You get a holding call. Right. It uh, just absolutely kills you when your, your special teams are working so well for you. Well, it didn't absolutely kill you, as it <laughs> turned out. First and 10, Huskies uh, still starting at the Cougar 44-yard line. Sheehy for two. Uh, tried to uh, to get the ball to Freddie Coleman, a little overthrown by Damon there. Third down and eight. Boy, you had a lot of third and longs yesterday. And here's Cameron Cleveland making another big play. Yeah. And really critical run after the play that allowed us to pick up the first down. At the Cougar 31-yard line, Sheehy around the right side for a gain of six. A really nice mix of, uh, of run and pass. Uh, try to go back to Dave Janoski and uh, uh, just not the correct timing on it. Third down and four at the 25 yard line. And here's Rashawn again. What a huge day he had. 212 <laughs> yards for the day. Not real easy tackling him there. He causes a couple of two, three of them to miss. Huskies at the Cougar 19 yard line. Another good gain on first down. The Sheehy show once again for six. The fun thing here was uh, he's going to take it again. And, and every time he just kept turning the bench in, pointing to him, tell him hey, <laughs> give it to me one more time. Gain of nine, first and goal at the four-yard line. Give it to him one more time and let him put it in the end zone one, one more time. time. And again, go right back and uh, and take a look at those big linemen giving him a great, great opportunity to run. Third touchdown of the day for Sheehy, 15th of the season, and that breaks the Husky single-season rushing touchdown record of 14 held by Napoleon Poffman in 1993. A great, great day for Rashawn Sheehy. And here, he got an extra point, barely, but uh, John Wales, maybe things had turned around for him with the first field goal. He kind of hooked that one, but got it through, and you're on top by eight points and feeling pretty good. A nine-play, 44-yard, three-and-a-half-minute drive. And the nice thing there, even on that extra point, was the confidence and timing of John Wales. 
even with a shaky hold and snap. Huskies ahead 30 to 22. Cougars with the ball. They start at their own 20 yard line. A running play for two. And now Jay Dumas for 13. Scott Greenlaw there come right back from the pass again. Got, uh, got Steve Hoffman back. This is a great drive by Washington State. Uh, in, in your eyes, though, a drive that uh, ate up too much ground too quickly. Uh, it sure did. And, uh, and all of a sudden, they're mixing run and pass real well. And, uh, and you see the missed tackles here. And again, the, so much credit to have to go to their runner. But uh, defensively, uh, this is where we need big plays and, and great tackling. Miguel Merriweather, one of the young players on this Cougar roster. And uh, give him some credit, too. He made a terrific run. They sure did. And, uh, Again, uh, the number of tackles of uh, defensive players leaving their feet and losing uh, leverage on the ball carrier that you just can't do when you're playing good defense. This is a gain of 44 yards for Merriweather. And Cougars first and goal at the Washington eight-yard line. Kwame Stewart, big guy at almost 230 pounds, four-yard gain. Right. Aliaga, one of the ones there on the, on the tackle. Second and goal at the four. They come back with Merriweather. And he puts the ball in the end zone. And uh, boy, that drive had to hurt if you're a defensive lover, as uh, I know you are, Jim. Mm -hmm. The Cougars just uh, munched it down the field. And they'll go for two now to try to tie the score. And this was pretty easy, too. Uh, they, uh, they did a really good job. We were guessing they're going to run some crossing routes and, uh, and play in a soft zone uh, on that extra point play. And, uh, uh, again, it was uh, a good play by them. And here's a good play by you on the ensuing kickoff as we're getting down to uh, crunch time in the fourth quarter. Jerome Payton started left, goes back right, and finds a lot of room. Well, I'll tell you, and some nice, nice people blocking out in front of him there. Uh, uh, just uh, gives us the field position that we need now to get this next drive started so we're able to stay in the game and have a chance to... Uh, to kick that winning field goal. Do you think they might onside kick in this situation, Jim? Uh, you had your we, hands team on the field. We thought they would come up with a different kick, uh, one that uh, that would be harder for us to handle, and uh, and so the best guess was to uh, to put your hands team in, and Alabama runs that part of our uh, of our kicking game. Well, you get a big run here from Sheehy, <laughs> 21 yard gain as you started at the Cougar 46 yard line. The Huskies getting the ball with just over two minutes to play. Now Damon comes back. Jerome Payton again. Again, the combination of those two plays, and we're right back uh, in field goal range. 35 yards in two plays. You go for the end zone to Coleman, almost, but not quite. And the, and the thing here with Bill Dietrich and myself was a let's throw safe passes and let's set up the, uh, uh, the touchdown or the field goal by good play selection. Sheehy getting close here. You could have made a first down, but uh, here's John Wales lining up for the game-winning field goal, and this one was money from the start. You got a great snap, a perfect hold, and a very happy place kicker. <laughs> it was. It was. It was the perfect snap. Uh, Shane Fortney got the ball down. Opu got it to him great, and uh, and John hit it just uh, right straight through the uprights. 21-yard game-winning field goal for John Wales who was just as happy as he could be and I'm sure a lot of those folks in the stands felt the same way the Huskies on top 33 to 36 plays 42 yards just one minute and 15 seconds but there was still time left the Cougars got the ball back with about a minute to play and Leaf came out throwing there's Jay Dumas again finding some space but uh, also some difficult footing right now it was important just not to give them the big big play to uh, to play back enough so that they weren't getting the 20, 30 yard gain and, uh, and make them earn it underneath. Uh, throwing crossing routes, uh, quick out routes, uh, uh, things that weren't going to put them in field position immediately. Leaf to uh, Dumas. This was broken up by Tony Parrish on a good play. Third down and 10 for the Cougars at their 20 yard line. Kid just kept winging it. There's a first down. Yep. Jay Dumas once again. But again, that clock's running down and. Uh, and they, they need some sort of a big play to really get them down fast. Ryan Leaf would have a big day throwing the football. He was 22 of 33 for 291 yards. Cougars go with a uh, hook and lateral play here. A good play, but as we look again, we're going to see that lateral was very much forward. It wasn't really even a difficult call. Two, three yards on the play. Mm -hmm. Merriweather took the lateral, but... Uh, forward and loss of down and now the Cougars were really up against it third down and two at their 39 yard line this would just about do it Leaf throwing long down the sideline 
tony perez just letting the ball fall harmlessly to the turf and the clock went down to double zeros there after and one of the more exciting games certainly of the season and certainly of this rival rivalry coming to a close the huskies defeating washington state thirty three to thirty and who's that uh, getting a little shoulder ride right there yeah uh, got uh, the uh, ice bucket down the back and uh, <laughs> and the shoulder ride and uh, just a tremendously emotional uh, team room afterwards a, a tremendous tremendous win for our team are you nervous at all the Cougars got the ball back had about a minute to play that that previous drive they went so well down the field uh, I'll tell you being the next defensive coach those moments scare you to death uh, they move the ball so fast let's take a look at the final statistics from Washington's three-point Apple Cup victory over Washington State some big numbers in this game a huge second half for both teams you look down at the total yardage 411 for them almost 500 for you the turnovers you mentioned Jim at the half uh, you had the two before halftime none in the second half you got the time of possession a little more uh, equated between the two teams but uh, a lot of offense a lot of scoring and I'll tell you what a lot of fun yesterday it, it really was it was a great game uh, for us to end with and to use as a as a evolving point now for uh, getting ready for a bowl game let's go back and relive that drive that won the game it is our Puget Sound GMC truck dealers drive of the game and what better one than the last one saving the best for last the drive of the game started at the Cougar 46 yard line after Payton's kickoff return Rashawn Sheehy had a 21 yard run on first down a 14 yard pass to Jerome Payton and a four yard run from Richard Thomas and then one of the great moments of the season there was justice after all for one John Wales. Putting through the 21 yard field goal to cap off that great drive our Puget Sound GMC truck dealers drive of the game and I'll see John Wales happy like that for a long time <laughs> I am sure I couldn't be more pleased for the young man to, to get the chance Jim to uh, atone for some earlier problems in the season it was mm -hmm. great I'll tell you it's the uh, it's a beautiful thing about a uh, about a team sport and uh, about the commitment and the hard work ethic of John Wales and uh, and the combination of Opu to uh, Shane Fortney and uh, John finishing it off. All right, we'll talk about the other Pac-10 scores yesterday. We'll look at the bull picture, and as we go to break, let's hear from the happiest guy at Husky Stadium after the Apple Cup won by Washington. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I took off running out the sideline. I don't think I ever run that fast before in my life, but it's a uh, sweet redemption. You know, it, it gets the monkey off your back, you know, completely now. Let's compare a 25-inch TV, $299 at Magnolia Hi-Fi, $299 at another store. But Magnolia is a better value. At Magnolia Hi-Fi, your questions are answered by the friendliest, most experienced staff in the Northwest. Magnolia's special displays make it easy and fun to compare models, and you get service. Magnolia Hi-Fi has the best service department in the nation. So you see, at Magnolia Hi-Fi, you get more than just a low price. You get a better value. I want a man that's thoughtful, intelligent, a good listener. Oh, and I want someone who's very experienced. Well, at plumbing. The Eagle Experience. Eagle experts that know their stuff. Eagle Hardware and Garden. More of everything. Secure your home with the classic styling and beauty of quick set lock sets, including the door set, too. One key opens both key entry and deadbolt. Quick set at Eagle. Love is but a song sing. Good song. Great song. <laughs> disguise so I can blend in and find out what people really want. Turns out they want great tasting food for free. Dream on! But at Jack in the Box you will find six supreme value combos starting at $1.99. You get fries, a drink, and classics like my grilled sourdough burger, the chicken supreme, and the one and only Jumbo Jack. Excuse me, do you make balloon animals? I'm sorry, I'm the head of a billion dollar company. Husky football with Jim Lambright was brought to you on Prime Sports by your Puget Sound GMC truck dealers, the strength of experience, by Miller Genuine Draft. 
making the Pac-10 a very cool place. And by Eagle Hardware and Garden. More of everything. The bowl invitations are not yet official for the most part, but it does look like the Washington Huskies, after yesterday's Apple Cup win against Washington State, are headed for El Paso, Texas, and the December 29th Sun Bowl. And Jim, what are your thoughts about that? Looks like a Big Ten team on the other side. Maybe Michigan State is the team that we've heard about. It looks like a real nice matchup to me. Uh, Pac the Big Ten still having one game to play. Uh, we could end up with Iowa, Michigan State, as you mentioned, Michigan, Penn State. Uh, it will take any one of those just a chance to get there and play. There will be four teams for sure, maybe five teams in the Pac-10 competing in bowl games this season. Let's look at yesterday's scores and talk about some of those teams. Oregon headed for the Cotton Bowl with a narrow win over Oregon State. Stanford might get a lesser bowl invitation after beating California in the big game in the Bay Area. And UCLA upset Southern Cal, the fifth straight win for the Bruins over the Trojans. Both of these teams will go bowling. UCLA going to the Aloha Bowl Christmas Day in Honolulu. Southern Cal, you would have to say, limping into the Rose Bowl against either Ohio State or Northwestern. Looks like Arizona State, the hottest team in the league at the moment, along with the Huskies, going to stay home for the holidays and play Arizona next week. Washington co-champions of the Pac-10 along with Southern Cal with records of 6-1-1 one, and one in the league. And I guess, Jim, in a way, it's too bad that a co-champion in a league winds up in, a, in one of the lower bowls like the Sun Bowl, and that's where you're going to go. That's one of the uh, unique little uh, quirks of the way the bowl organization worked out. And, uh, and for our team, uh, for the seniors, uh, for the captains, uh, we just need to be highlighted uh, because of what they've done to keep the program together and, uh, and to show that, hey, we really are a good football team that can go play in any bowl and play well and play good enough to win and uh, as we did all season long get a little bit better and uh, have a chance against a really fine Big Ten opponent. All right, Jim, it was a great season. The home schedule was unbelievable. Six terrific games. Enjoyed working with you as always and good luck in the, in the Sun Bowl. I hope you win it. Hey, thanks, Bob. It's going to be a great experience. As we uh, go away tonight, we're going to credit some of the people who did a lot of work behind the scenes on this program. Thank you for being with us all season long and what do you say we see you in El Paso, Texas, December 29th. Good night, everybody. Thank you.